Hi, welcome to our session, SRE on the platform. Thanks for joining. My name is Oscar Mullin. I'm a Senior Director of Technology with Mercado Libre. As an SRE and as a business owner, this is something you don't want to see, right? Your service is unavailable, your users cannot use your product, so you are not providing any business value. Luckily, in today's world, you can talk to ChatGPT and say, hey, I have 500, what should I do? And since it has been trained on the best breed of PC and response, it will tell you to do exactly what you should do. Turn it off, wait, and then turn it on. Like, this could solve some issues, but lack of availability is not the only thing we really care about, right? There are other things like users being locked out of their account or high tail latencies that makes our system unresponsive or inconsistency in the prices you show. Or if you have money transaction lagging your queues, that will result in people not seeing their money. Or if you have a messaging system, losing the order of messages. So all of those things impact reliability. The best business strategy of all is having a satisfied customer. And this relationship with customers are usually based on trust. So you only do business with those you trust. But then reliability is a precondition for trust. You trust those who are, real, those who are reliable. One characteristic of trust is that it's building drops and lost in buckets. So whenever you have reliability issues, you lose a big chunk of the trust you already gained. So there is no finish line when it comes to system reliability and your efforts to improve should never cease. Some key terms we need to discuss. Reliability is being trustworthy or performing consistently well. But then we have resiliency, the ability to absorb, adapt to, or recover from a potentially disruptive event. Availability, the time your system is available. Durability, the time your data is ensured to be stored and available. And then we have latency, which is the time it takes for a request to complete. From a platform perspective, the last four are guarantees. In one end, that your platform needs to provide to each application running on top of your platform, but also tools that you need to build on top of your platform so the applications running on it can actually provide the same guarantees to their end users or um, clients. According to certain statistics, half of the organizations already adopted some sort of platform engineering approach. So we can say with confidence that platforms are currently driving business as technology. And at the same time, platforms are responsible for the key components of that that's being driven, right? And if you really want to embrace the platform engineering approach, you have to create self-service platform in which the development teams are in the driving seat of what's being driven. So. From a business reliability perspective, platforms have a dual responsibility. On one end, they are responsible for keeping the key components working reliable. And on the other end, they have to provide the right tools and interfaces for developers to build and operate reliable applications. In Mercado Libre, we have a platform and we have a platform engineering approach. A brief introduction about Mercado Libre is the largest e-commerce fintech and logistic company in Latin America with more than 50 million visits per day and more than three 0.5 million purchases per day. To support this large business, we also need large technology. We currently have 26,000 microservices that generate 15 million requests per second, and we do 10,000 deploys per day. All of these uses 60,000 instances of data services and run in three different cloud providers. This is built and operated by 13,000 engineers. As you can imagine, we have a highly distributed environment with a lot of changes. And if you see there, 83% of our engineers have less than two years within the company. These three things are usually not things that go hand in hand with reliability, right? It's not the best combination. So we really rely heavily on our platform to help us standardize many things and deal with this in a reliable way. So we have Fury, which is our platform, which is driving Mercado Libre's technology. We have Fury since 2015. It is already a mature platform and it's 100% built in-house completely. The uptime of our core metrics, considering all the downtime generated by applications running on top of Fury, is four nines and a two. So now we're going to show you a brief demo about Fury and um, how we created tools to enable developers to have reliable applications. Then we will go and talk about a bit more about some lessons learned. In a future session, we can talk about how we made the platform itself reliable. So now let's go to the demo. Okay, so this is the catalog page of Fury. Let's look for one application, the Sites API. This is one application out of all the ones that we have, 25,000 I show you. Um, so this is the summary page. You can see this is an application that is written in Go. Uh, here you can see the SLIs for this application. Uh, and also you can see policies, right? Like if you cannot deploy, 
because um, you have blocked deploys during the day or you have issues with the reliability that would be blocked, for example. And also you see that in three days we have a freeze coming in because we have a commercial event and you have a freeze calendar that you can access. So when you have a new application, the first thing you do is write the code. Here you have access to all your most used tools. Um, but the thing when you have your code, you write your code and then you want to um, build your code. So we have pipelines. Here, if we open any pipeline, you can see the whole history of pipelines. We open one, and then you can see that one of the key things of reliability is uh, quality. So in terms of code coverage, you see that this build had the right level of coverage, and then there were no uh, the vulnerabilities in the pull request. So this is a, a good um, version that um, you can create. So automatically, the version is created. So you have a list of version over here. And now you're good to go. You have a new version of your application with the right quality level. The next thing you want to do is to create an auto scaling group to start receiving traffic. So you go here to operation scopes and say, I want to create a new web scope. You add a name. And then uh, one of the key things here is to select the criticality. If you select high criticality, it's going to ask you, OK, so which core metrics of the company you are impacting? Because you have high criticality, you're going to have specific guarantees. Um, so you actually need to impact something critical. So uh, let's say I impact user sign in in Argentina. So the cool thing about this is that once you do this and you create this, if now there is an incident impacting this metric and your application is either alerted or having a deploy or having an increase in traffic or having an increase in latency, your team will be automatically paged. And also in the troubleshooting tools, your application will be highlighted as one of the potential applications that is causing the issue. So now that you created your um, auto scaling group, you go to infrastructure and you see it here. So now you have uh, auto scaling group with, um, in this case, three instances, a maximum of 100 instances. Now the next thing you have to do is deploy your code to this um, scope, right, to this auto scaling group. So you can actually have something working. So you can come here and say, I want to deploy this version here. And you see you have multiple types of deploy. The, one of the most relevant is the safe deploy that is like a blue-green deploy, but that is automatically checking metrics. And if there is an incident, it will automatically roll back. So you don't have a higher impact. You also have canary deploys, blue-green deploys. And also you have GCP migration deploy. So this scope is running in AWS. If you want to move it to GCP because you have reliability issues in AWS, it's just a deploy, just like that. So simple. Also, you see here that there is one version that is not recommended for productive scope because it's not coming from a stable branch. If I click it, I cannot deploy it in any production scope. And let's assume for a minute that this is a, a version with a bug. I can come here to versions and say, I want to um, disable that particular version so no one else can ever deploy it. Again. So now that my code is running in production, uh, using traffic catalog, I can expose access groups so people can consume me and I can declare which are my consume access group. This will simplify uh, all the traffic management, authorization, authentication, and also allow us to do certain uh, reliability um, operations with the traffic. So going back to infrastructure, uh, well, you also have the activity page here where you can see everything that has been happening to your application, complete log of events. Global status will open the status page. And then here in infrastructure, we can go to our read scope and See here that we automatically, by creating it, have access to a dashboard in Datadog, generic for all applications. We also have New Relic automatically, and we also have all of our logs collected automatically. We, can, we also have here alerts that were automatically created for this scope. So now I have uh, certain alerts that were automatically created and enabled. I can disable them, like doing this, but if, if this is a critical application, I will receive an opportunity um, like this, say, hey, well, here, hey, you have an issue, uh, you need to fix it. In the case of alerts, if this is a critical application, it will automatically turn on the alerts once again. So going back to the infrastructure, if I have issues, I can, uh, this will, of course, auto scale, but if I have issues and I need to scale it more aggressively, I can boost it from here. I can also pause the scaling, do an instant blue green, and I can drop traffic. If you uh, enter here, you see that there are different strategies. For example, I want to drop all the traffic coming from medium, criticality, and I can uh, specify which amount of traffic I want to actually drop. 
If I go to reliability section, I can create RAM books for the on-call team on the most common alerts. And also, if someone is having issues with my application and need to contact my on-call team, they can come here and say, hey, something is being impacted with your read scope. This is the description of the problem. I verify this contact. And this will contact the on-call team and also track all the metrics and everything. Um, you also have, uh, well, the service map that says who stock with whose and which is the current health of each of them. Since we have a highly distributed environment, this could take a while to load. And then we have the uptime section in which you can see the metrics for your application, uh, what we call the SLR or server level requirement based on your criticality. It looks like read is healthy and still have error budget set to go. Um, we're going to skip certain sections because we have time constraint. One of the other things you can do here if you go to help is modeling. Uh, you can request a service model or an uptime modeling. These are kind of architectural reviews in which expert teams, in the case in the uptime model, the SRE team will work with you and help you identify potential issues in your architecture and help you um, resolve them before you have incidents. Or also as part of a postmortem, this could be an action item. The cool thing about this is that this data is stored attached to the application. So if the whole team changes, if um, the application moves to a different team. All the data and all the decisions that were made are actually tracked and tied to the application. Finally, you also have platform services, which are abstraction of cloud services um, that provide standardization and multiple, multiple reliability uh, implementations. For example, you can have a key value store. So here you see that this application is using a key value store. One thing that you can see from here is um, that you can boost it. And the cool thing is, imagine we have this commercial event within three days. I can create a program boost and say, hey, I want it to run once in three days uh, because um, I have uh, this commercial event. And this is the time. So, and I wanted to boost to, I don't know, 120,000. So this will automatically make sure that I have that ready. Uh, of course, this is out of scale, right? But this is a particular scenario that uh, is different from your usual traffic, or you can do this periodically. And you can do these kind of things also with other services. And we have many other um, capabilities based for reliability. And that was a brief demo of some of the tools we built on top of our platform to improve reliability. Of course, we have more, but we didn't have time to show them all. Let's go to some lessons learned. First one is you need to provide clear information to all the users of your platform. And you can be opinionated, but please provide alternatives within a subset of things. It's okay if you don't want to allow all in the plugs for productive, but please do allow other multiple types of deployment. Automate all the things, most of the things. Make them as transparent as possible, but please leave the development team know about the changes you are making and also centralize the information about all of these automated changes in a single place. This will help you when you have incidents. You want to simplify complex operation and the developer experience for all incident operations. This is a moment in which teams are under stress and they need to make fast decisions. You want to make it as simple and as easy as possible and also help them avoid making mistakes that could make things worse. You have to think for when error happens or exceptions are needed. Features like disabled version, easier rollback or rate limit exception are things you want to have in your toolbox. Focus on standardization. The most standard your tool are, the better, because they are simple to use and well known by everyone, and everyone will be able to help where there is an easier. If you're going to add frictions, then also provide recognition. A strategy based only in punishment will only go that far. Suggestions are not always welcome because teams have their own roadmap, so make sure you have a way to enforce the critical suggestion for your platform. Criticality by applications is usually overstated because you are going to have better guarantees. So if you provide guarantees for criticality, also ask for responsibility. Don't assume the on-call engineers have a lot of in-depth information about their systems. Provide easy debugging tools so they can maximize the response. Link postmortem, uptime model, service model, and everything to the application, creating a history of documentation attached to the application. People will change, the application will change, and you want to have the whole history of why certain things were made the, the way they were made. Audit all the things and all the changes. Integrate all these tools with the tools your team usually use. And please build a culture of reliability by knowledge sharing, wikis, contextual help, and so on. Which are the next steps for our platform? Integration with artificial intelligence and machine learning for incident response and code analysis, more self-healing tools, 
as a learned gamification to improve the response of our service level requirements and chaos engineering so you can change before you have to. Thanks. It was my pleasure to be here. If you have additional questions, we can meet and we can discuss. And also, I would like to learn from your platform as well. Thank you.